Happy Monday, everyone. Welcome to the Daily Smash for Monday, May 8th, 2023. I'm Rick. I'm Kelly. What a terrific weekend we had. Amazing weekend. Really fun Sunday. Sunday fun day. And Saturday was awesome. Beautiful. I'm going to tell you the story of Kelly picking the derby horse. Uh, first, don't forget that Ilya Wine sponsors the Daily Smash, and we love our Ilya Wine. We do. And here are three of the four varieties available to you at Ilya.com. With a discount code Rick and Kelly 10 you get 10% off, and it's delivered right to your door. Yes. Thank you, Ilya. Thank you, Ilya. Try it. Check it out. You're going to love it. Oh, one other commercial for our pickleballpartytown.store website. By the way, we're going to consolidate all of our websites in the next two weeks. Yeah, we have one of our, our uh, smashers out there, Tasha Mayberry. She's actually a patron as well on yes. our Rick and Kelly show on patreon.com. Yes. Anyway, pickleball. Uh, partytown.store you can get our paddles and custom paddles and balls uh, eventually we're going to have one site you can go there and you can be directed to everything we got we got a lot going on we do um, um, I just love I just want to say I love our community uh, I love you smashers I love our Patreon I just I really love like what we're doing here like we just have such a nice community we're here a community that loves to help one another um, you guys help us out so much and like the Tasha Mayberry, I mean, everybody, all of you, uh, there's so many. And, you know, when we have our Zooms, we have uh, a girl, Lee, she's going through a hard time. And um, one of our patrons recommended that she gets a baby registry going on Amazon. She's doing like seven weeks and she's having some issues, you know, some problems at home. And so we're going to we're going to share her. Her registry, and we're going to see uh, how giving our smashers can be. And mm -hmm. We're going to give, and we hope others will too, to help yeah. all this really warm, she, wonderful woman out. Woman, awesome, awesome lady, um, just basically got kicked out on the streets from her jerk of a husband, and she's pregnant, has, I think, three other kids, and um, luckily somebody from her church is letting her stay at her house right now, but yeah. right now she's in um, need of baby supplies and yeah. we're here and i'd love all of you guys uh would try to help her so she, we, she's i think she's putting that together today we, we had about 15 people at least on the zoom call this morning and for our patreons and when someone came up with the idea of, aaron aaron came up with the idea of setting up this registry for her she started crying and i I we were both crying. I think every one of our smash our patreons were. It crying. was such an emotional moment. She was so grateful for any assistance. Yeah. Oh my God. It's just um, wonderful. So we'll take some of our derby winnings mm -hmm. and buy her some stuff. Yeah. So Saturday morning we go to breakfast. It's hot in here. Oh, you want to open the door? Yeah, I I'll do it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Talk. Talk. I will. Talk. Talk. So <laughs> Saturday morning we go to breakfast on the beach. We took a nice walk. Didn't ride bikes yesterday, but we did uh, Sunday. Um, and I said to Kelly, you know, the Derby was that afternoon, and I said, I want to read you all of the horses and the odds, and I want you to pick the winner, pick the one you like the best. And I read her 18 different horses, the whole field, plus their odds. And uh, <laughs> Kelly goes, I like Madge. Madge was 17 to 1 at the time. He goes, I like Madge. <laughs> Just picked it out of the blue, the number 8 horse. Yeah, I well, I love the number 8. But I didn't even, I don't even think I said. A number 8. I like the name. Yeah. That's why. Madge. Well, because Rick went to the sports book. Wait, tell him the story about the sports book, about how this lady won. Tell, tell him the story. Oh, um, when we were in Vegas for the uh, Marine Corps reunion, I went to place a college basketball bet and I was looking for a long shot. And I go, I don't even know anything about the team. I'm just, he goes, it doesn't matter. Like you don't have to know what you're doing. I had a lady come up to me, had never placed a bet in her life and wanted to bet all of the NFL games that Sunday. And I said, well, you can pick the favorite or you can pick uh, the home team or you can pick the color. She liked the colors. Yeah. So she picked every game based on which color she liked better. All, whatever it was, 17 NFL games, 15, whatever, however many games there are. Got them all right. And on a, I think it was a $10 bet, won like $120,000. It might have been more than that. I love those stories. <laughs> I love those stories. But then you always hear about those stories, those lottery shows. You know, yeah. they have on like whatever. I watch them. 
Yeah. And they all end up losing the money. They blow it all. So <laughs> we, so I have a Twin Spires account where you're going to actually place bets on your phone for horse races. And I only set it up for the Derby. That's why I have it. I'm not like a degenerate gambler. But on Derby Day, I'll place bets. And my buddies all say, hey, we we place bets for us. So I do. So I put 100 bucks on match because Kelly picked the horse. And then... One of your friends suggested the eight horse too. My friend Billy Otten, um, he <clears throat> he is a horse guy. He's yeah. he's won millions of dollars on his horses. So I texted him and I said, "Hey, what do you like?" After I picked Madge. Yeah, and he also liked the eight horse. So I put another hundred on that horse, and those two that two hundred dollars paid like thirty two hundred dollars back. And then I'm like kicking myself. Why didn't I put a 500 on? Why didn't I put a thousand on it? You know, like once you know who won, like it seems so easy. It's not. And it's a big feel in a horse. I'm just so blown away that you picked the winner. I'm not. I got skills. <laughs> you picked the winner I right here. I don't. No, but my, my, I have a friend that's a bookie, and he said everybody that places bets, they all lose. Eventually, that I mean, I think that's why the casinos are in business and why the sports books do so well because the odds are with the house but you do get lucky sometimes i do mm-hmm. i got lucky um we took a bike ride today oh um uh, rick was with us yesterday for all of our oh, saturday for all of our escapades and then uh he hooked up last uh, saturday night with a female at the bar <laughs> And then he calls us this morning, like, hey, what are you guys doing? Let's go for a bike ride. He was, he was so sleeping over at some girl's house, like right down the street. So we, came, we went on a bike ride with us, and we, um, we had such a good time. We did. He, he, he was so Because he's from Atlanta, and he's building a uh, restaurant in Dallas. And he is friends with very famous people. Um, Migos. Migos and uh, Valori, I guess, is the name of the clothing with this guy. Like, very famous. Okay, jo- Jolie's Kid C- Cooties um, or ASAP Rocky's brother. I don't know, one of those. He was telling us how he went to a party with Madonna. Yeah. And, like, P. Diddy was there. Yeah, he, he, P. Diddy got in a fight with The Weeknd. Yeah. The <laughs> he was telling us all these so, true Hollywood stories, which we love to hear. All of us love to hear those yeah. true Hollywood stories. <laughs> and um, But it was so funny because he was like, how much are these houses here? So how many, what are these houses here? And we went into a couple we were like, at, you know, down at the million, wedge. Five, ten million. Whatever. Right. And we went down to the wedge and we went through some open houses. And it's just so neat to see there were seven, eight million dollars for oh, yeah. these thirty four hundred square foot houses. It just and boggles my mind now. Nice houses, they're very nice. But they're like well twenty, twenty seven hundred, twenty five hundred square feet a foot. They're like twenty five hundred dollars a square foot. It's insane that that house is not on. It has ocean views, but it's not Clearly. on the ocean. Right. Eight million dollars, seven and a half million. What is it going to be like, even with inflation and everything, twenty years from now? How much is that eight million dollar home going to be? Well, if it keeps appreciating in value every year, it's going to be you know twelve, fifteen million. Wow. And so I got video from the roof deck of one of the houses, and it, it again beautiful, beautiful. But for that much money, and the taxes here in California, I mean, are outrageous. Yeah, well, they might go up even more if that reparations thing happens. Oh, yeah, how about talk, that? We're going to talk about that. Um, I did, there was something else I wanted to, oh, no, let's talk about that right now. Yeah. Um, a Some committee, like, recommended reparations be paid to anyone who is a descendant of a slave in California. But you have right? to prove it. Somehow you have to prove it. But there was no slaves in California. Right. The, the, the California never had slavery. Right. So why are they paying reparations for The people for who would be paying never had slaves, and the people they're paying were never slaves. Correct. And yet they're suggesting that they should give something like $360,000 to every single person, African-American, black person in California, which would cost the state like $800 billion, which is... Two and a half times the annual budget. Oh, real of the day. This guy summed it up nicely. Reparations for blacks in California could top 800 billion. Two and a half times the state's annual budget. 
people that never owned slaves will be paying people that were never slaves in a state that never had slavery. <sighs> yeah, hello? Just get me a flight to California as soon as possible. Why am I moving to California all of a sudden? I just, just felt like the Lord put it on my heart, you know? I need to be in California. Thank you. I, I just I, I identified as black on and you guys saw it on the on uh, the reunion. You actually two years are ago. Three, almost three percent. I am three percent uh, African American. Yeah, three percent, and um, I identify as black as you guys all know because I told you two years ago. Yes. Um, do I get part of those? I actually money? also identify as black. You do. Yes. From the waist down. I mean, it's confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we're <laughs> we go too far. <laughs> Did we go too far? Because we go too far sometimes. <laughs> we make the ourselves whole, laugh. The right. whole thing is so stupid, though. I'm sorry. It's stupid. I, I Listen, we're all embarrassed by that piece of history. I mean, it's horrible what happened. But what about the Chinese? The Chinese were slaves here. Irish they brought slaves. They brought the Chinese here to do those railroads. The How Jews, about the, the, the Jews, Jews, too? The Jews were enslaved in Egypt and beyond. But the point is, this is the land of opportunity. Anyone can do anything in America, and there are so many examples of it. In fact, we met a guy on our bike ride today who he's from Israel. He was born in Israel, but he grew up in L.A. His dad was a gardener, okay? A gardener. And he would work with his dad sometimes. Like, when he was real little. Mowing grass, raking, whatever they did. His dad was a full, like a legit gardener. He grew up poor. He bought a house on the water by the wedge. He said it was apparently the most expensive house on that street. He started his own business at 16. And then started buying up real estate. The guy, I don't know how much he's worth. Awesome dude. Invited us in for a tour of his home. He recognized me from Fox. Yeah. And he's, he's just one example. There are so many examples of people who have come from nothing and made themselves something. Well, this and is no, he's not black, but there are plenty of African-American people who have done the same thing. Oh, yeah. If you work hard and you're smart enough. You can do whatever you want to do. Anyone, but that's but any that's any gender, any race, but, anyone but, can but, do anything in this country. Well, if it continues to go into, you know, that way of redistribution of wealth and all that stuff, you can't have that kind of system. Right. Then you walk into socialism and every you're taking hardworking people who are educated, take risk, work hard, and you are um it's like the middle class, there's not gonna be a middle class anymore. And well, that's you know, and if you're trying to take from the rich and give to the poor, then the rich are not going to, they're not going to do it anymore. They'll, they won't run businesses. They won't open businesses. They won't employ thousands of people. They'll just close up shop and walk away. Why would they? Right. Why, you know, they worked so hard to get where they are. Now you're going to take that away from them? Why? Because other people weren't working as hard? The whole thing is ridiculous. Exactly. So. That's why I want to be mayor or president one day and have <laughs> everybody just have a flat tax. That's fair. I agree. Because even if you do make more money, you pay more money, okay? <laughs> that's it. Like, <laughs> that's fair. Hashtag fair vote for Kelly. Fair and balanced. Hashtag. That's what we need, and that's what makes a country thrive and grow. You see, communism doesn't ever work. Vote for Kelly. <laughs> you had the most brilliant Instagram post. Someone said you broke the internet when you... Because Heather Dubrow posted on Flashback Friday posts a picture of the cast from Kelly's last season and oh your first season mm -hmm. Kelly's first season that they were on together the only time you're on a show with her and she cut Kelly out of the picture flashback Friday where's Kelly so one of my one of my <laughs> smashers emailed it to me and goes look look how petty she is she cut you out of the picture yeah so my friend Stacy called me and she put uh, a little uh, on her she put Andy Cohen's face on there and, and then I, Rick goes, why don't we put... Um, Dylan Mulvaney's picture. Dil Dylan I Mulvaney. Say, Andy, take that, put Dylan Mulvaney's picture <laughs> on, on her face because that's who she looks like. Yeah. And it'd be a lot funnier. Yeah. So she did. She did a good job. She did. Kelly posts it, and you got like 12,000 likes and almost three to 2,500 comments. So I, I said, hey, we're going on Heather Dubrow's um, page because you know I, she blocked me and I blocked her. I, go on her page. I want to see how many likes that she has. 1.6 million followers. Yeah. 
and twice as many as you allegedly twice as much as me mm -hmm. and she doesn't have nearly as many likes on her on her i don't pay for mine okay i don't buy mine i don't pay for mine as, as a matter of fact, I'm losing like crazy, all right? <laughs> Every time you post something controversial, you lose another I'm losing thousand. like I'm So if you're thousand. not following Kelly on Instagram, please do. Kelly yeah, D. Dodd please, please. on Instagram. Kelly D. Dodd, yeah. Uh, so, so, so she'll have posts where she'll have like 80 comments, 200 comments. So, so, uh, <laughs> so, uh, so this guy comes up and he goes, I don't understand why you are going after Heather DeBro. Why are you going after her? She's done nothing to you. She has done nothing to you. Oh, really? She has done nothing to me? Okay. Yeah, she has. She went on Dave Quinn's book, Rosé, or whatever that trash book is. It's like garbage. Um, went in there, said I was anti-Semitic. Am I? I'm married to a Jew for Pete's sakes. I mean, and if you said, are, you're hiding said, it really And well. said that I was racist and was talking on the seasons about me that she never worked with me on. Okay? So not only did she disparage me and like... She also, her son did give us COVID in Aspen. She sent two seasons to assist. Told us, um, allegedly, she told us that. Uh, uh, she was going to empty our bank account. Empty our bank account. She wanted an apology, which I, I half heartedly. One of the greatest non apology apologies of all time. And then, uh, you know, and then she told Evolution that she could not work with me. And um, yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. But whatever. So, then she cut her out of the photo. What do you think Kelly's going to do? You cut her out. But I also did it to be, we also did it to it be a, like hilarious. Yeah, it was a clapback and it was brilliant. I mean, there's so many people out in the world that don't have a sense of humor. Yeah. It's just shocking to me. And remarkable. Right? But a lot of people do. And oh, a lot, a lot of, people of people do. really appreciated your post. They were laughing. They were dying. You read the comments on Kelly's post. I had just some read, just whack five job. Minutes. Oh, and then I love how people go, you're transphobic. Uh, and you're uh, homophobic. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. All my friends are gay, for Pete's sakes. And you know what? I'm not scared of cross-dressers, okay? I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm not. There you go. Thank you. Was that a rant? It was. Okay. Kind of. <laughs> Kelly's rant. Kind of. In the news now. In the news. Uh, according to Fox Weather, these are the top summer vacation spots in the U.S., Okay, you ready? San Francisco, number nine. It is. <sighs> San Francisco, it's like Mark Twain said, the coldest winter ever felt was a summer in San Francisco. San Francisco sucks in the summer. The only time <laughs> San Francisco is nice is September, October. Those are called Indian summers. But if you want to go June, July, August, it's a tundra. You're like in the Arctic. It's a beautiful city. It is. But they have a lot of problems. Uh, Monterey is number seven. And that's, I used to go to Monterey all the time. Uh, I took you there to Pebble Beach. Oh, yeah. That, oh, that's Monterey? That's Monterey. Um, yeah. It's beautiful there. Pebble Beach, uh, Carmel, one of my favorite places in the world. However, it's freezing there in the summer. Um, Aspen, number four. We went last year for Jolie's birthday. Love Aspen in the summertime. Aspen beautiful. is probably the prettiest, most beautiful place in the summer. Yeah. Bring bring your wallet. Mm -hmm. Uh a big wallet. Boston was number three. Boston's beautiful. Yeah, Boston is nice. Uh, Myrtle Beach was seven. Orlando. <clears throat> okay. Excuse me. Orlando, number one. That is hot as hell. There's bugs. It's muggy. Humid. It's humid. And... I, I'm really shocked at that. How is number one what? Orlando? Is and that because people go to Disneyland Tampa's there? 10. Palm Beach is six. Miami's five. Marco Island, number two. So they picked five locations in Florida in the top ten. Which I, I, I don't agree with this. How, list who at writes all. this, by the way? And how are they this getting was this? This was written by Fox, someone at Fox Weather. Well, they need to get fired. Yeah, I, I think there are a couple good choices on None there. None of those. No, you don't. You go there for the winter. You right. don't go there for the summer. <laughs> Why would you go there in the summer? <laughs> you don't. Have you been to Miami in the summer? <laughs> yeah. I lived in Miami for five years. Okay, it is miserable yeah. in the summer. July, August. Do not go to Miami. Okay, <laughs> don't do it. Orlando. There's not even a beach there. I mean, what? that is the most, I can tell you, Orlando, beautiful one. places to go. Beautiful Ridiculous. places in the summer to go are Montana, uh, 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 Newport Beach, uh -huh. San Diego. Yeah. Um, those are 
beautiful places to go in in the summertime. Yeah. Uh, Yellowstone, like those kinds of places I for like the summer. We're already living in the best place. Napa, Napa is beautiful oh, yeah, in the Napa. summer. Napa, I can't believe that's not on. Forget San Francisco. Go to Napa. Yeah. <laughs> go to the Sonoma Valley. Exactly. Yeah, or come here, Calistoga, because, and we'll say hi to you. We were, we were riding bikes on the way back today, and somebody goes, "I know, know you, you too." too. <laughs> It was a fun day. Oh, by the way, one of my smashers says, Kelly, I'm really, really um, concerned about your drinking. I just got my liver and my kidneys checked, and I'm in perfect, perfect condition. Yeah. Just FYI. And, and I, but by the way, we don't drink every single day. We we do, but it's it's like, like, like that beer that we drank. We had one beer, and we split it in half, and then if we have wine, we have like one glass, and then we keep it throughout the day. It's mm-hmm. like we have a glass a day. And you know what? I didn't have any glasses today. Do you know Krug? Krug, uh, the guy that started Napa. Like he was the first winery yeah. in Napa Valley. Yeah. He lived to be like 110 years old, and he drank red wine every single day. Wow. They say it's the Reservatrol in there that does, uh, but I don't know. 110 and drank wine every single day of his life. I, I don't want to be 110. Me either. <laughs> I want to go out at 80. Uh, we hope you enjoyed today's smash. Yeah. And we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button. Yeah, take care, everybody. We're going to go see Julie at work right now. Yeah.